Hey guys, and welcome to, all right, there are already too many peace signs in this video. Hey guys, and welcome to a very long overdue thrifting tips video. Now you guys know me as somebody who thrifts a lot, but for the majority of my life, I was one of those people who could not for the life of me get into thrifting. I just found it so frustrating. I could never find something that I actually liked. It really wasn't until college that I got into thrifting and I felt like I developed my thrifting skill set. So today I wanted to share my tips with you guys. Hopefully, whether you are getting started with thrifting or you're a bit of like an advanced thrifter and you want some pro tips from somebody who's doing it for a very long time, I have something helpful to offer. It's gonna be a juicy video. She's gonna be meaty. Um, why did I just act like I was squeezing a boob? Before I jump in though, I did want to say there has been some like discussion about whether thrifting as like a trendy thing rather than out of economic necessity is fair to people who actually rely on thrift stores as their main source of clothing. I do think that is an important issue to be sensitive about and I would love to hear your guys' experiences if um, it has personally affected you or your family. But I will say overall, only around 20% of clothing that gets donated to thrift stores is actually sold and the rest has to go to recycling plans or get sold to resale markets in third world countries. So overall, there is still an incredible supply of secondhand clothing that isn't being bought. And overall, I do think it is a net good if we get more people thrifting. Like when I was in high school, it was all about like who could afford Abercrombie, who had their like Ugg boots. And now it's super cool to see people being proud of clothing that they bought for an affordable price, being proud of clothing that they bought secondhand, and also just like expressing their style through really unique, funky pieces. Um, I don't know, I just wish that I had that when I was younger. And of course, environmentally, I think it's great that people are buying secondhand instead of new stuff. However, as thrift stores do get more popular, I think that we can all pitch in by leaving thrift stores better than we found them. If there is clothing on the ground, pick it up and put it back on the rack. If you try something on or you have clothes that you don't want anymore, put them back exactly where you found them in the correct sections. Just generally be kind and respectful to the employees. Like here's Satan, here's you if you're rude to an employee working at a service job. So just keep that in mind. I think that we can all do our best to make thrift stores a really good place for everybody. So with that being said, let's jump into my tips. Now, I think one of the most common misconceptions about thrifting is that you can only do it at your local chain thrift store. But there are actually so many different ways that you can buy clothing secondhand. So today I'm gonna walk you guys through tips for all of them. So first up, here are my tips for hunting down a good regular thrift store. In order to figure out where you should go thrifting, you kind of have to figure out which end of the spectrum you want to look for. Are you looking for vintage clothing or are you looking for contemporary clothing at a cheaper price? So if you're searching for vintage clothing, you got to go where the old people are. <laughs> you got to go to where there are families out in the suburbs. You can look up online the counties or neighborhoods in your area and look up the average age demographic. And you can also look up the average income. So if you want a high income and a higher average age, or if you want a sneaky little shortcut, you you can just look up country clubs and shop in those areas. Or if you are a real estate hoe like me, you can go on Zillow and look at property values and then set your minimum to like half a million dollars or something and see where homes pop up. Or if you're in LA, all of the homes are worth like a million dollars or more. So you gotta go like 1.5 million and above. There you go, you found yourself some rich people. Also, this could be used as a guide to finding out which houses you should rob, but um, don't do that. The only steals we're getting here are thrift store steals because we got some good deals. Oh, that rhymed. Bars. Macklemore, watch out. A new thrift store rapper is in town. <laughs> um, anyways. I, what was I saying? But on the other hand, if you are thrifting for more contemporary clothing, go to where like 20 something professionals live, which tends to be like more downtown or in kind of like a trendy area. Once you've found a store, try thrifting on the weekdays instead of the weekends. I know it's not possible for everybody with a nine to five, but I think you'll often find that there is a higher volume of donations before like the big rush of customers have come on the weekends. Now this part is where it gets like a little bit neurotic, but if you are serious about finding good go-to thrift stores, I would recommend keeping a thrift store log. And basically you can keep like a notes app on your phone. It doesn't have to be that complicated, but every single time you go to a new thrift store, write down the quality of each of the sections. Often there isn't one thrift store that's good for everything, but there is like a thrift store that has really well-organized men's t-shirts or one thrift store that has like a lot of ball gowns and prom dresses. So if you note which section is best in each thrift store, you can save time by just making a beeline to that one section that you like. And you can also note which days are the best for 
for each thrift store. Um, if you really want to get advanced, you can ask the employees when they do their biggest restocks. Most thrift stores will kind of like restock throughout the day, but there might be one day where they get the most donations and then it might take like another day for them to turn over the stock and organize it in the store. And then that is the day that you should go shopping. Or if you're too embarrassed to do that like me, you can just go on multiple days and note which days were the best for shopping there. Of course, at the end of the day, sometimes it is just really hard and time consuming to find physical places to thrift that you actually really like. So another great option is online thrifting. This portion of the video is sponsored by ThreadUp. I have worked with them so many times before, even when I'm not sponsored by them, I love shopping at them because it's just such a freaking convenient way to thrift. Basically, they make it possible to thrift from your bed, which I'm not complaining about. They're basically just a giant online thrift store. You guys always ask me for my tips on how I find cute stuff on ThreadUp though. So I thought I would tell you right now. <laughs> wow, what an intro, Ashley. So first up, I take advantage of ThreadUp's filtering feature. It basically allows you to input your size in like bottoms, tops, dresses, shoes, so that you only have to look at clothing that you already know will fit you. But you can also filter by color, brand, price, style. So normally how I shop is by brand. I always think about what brands age well. So for example, something like Abercrombie might not be the best to search on ThreadUp because there's going to be a lot of shirts from like the early 2000s, those hoodies that might not be super in style versus something like Madewell, J. Crew, Anthropology, Free People. I still really like their clothing from like five to 10 years ago that ends up on ThreadUp. Also no surprise, but one of my favorite brands to search is Urban Outfitters. I have actually found multiple items on ThreadUp that I saw like literally a year ago in store at Urban Outfitters. For example, I got this skirt. I literally have a photo of me trying on this exact skirt at Urban Outfitters. I thought it was a super cute skirt and I was like nearly ready to buy it new, but I'm glad I didn't because this was originally estimated to cost around $45 and I got it for $9. I also picked up this dress from Urban Outfitters, which honestly looks like something they would have carried this past spring slash summer. It was originally estimated to cost $60 and I got it for $12. So besides that, I will also always search for Tommy Hilfiger and Por Polo Ralph Lauren. 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 Oh god. This was like an old meme in my old videos that I could never pronounce Lauren right. Is it Lauren or Lauren? I don't fucking know still, and I'm 21 now. These are two classic brands that I feel like have aged very well. And you can also search the men's section for these and find some really cute like quarter zips or sweaters that look very like preppy and classy. So for example, I got this Tommy Hilfiger sweater for $18 and it was originally estimated to cost around 129. I just find that Tommy Hilfiger and Polo Ralph Lauren always have really classic colors, classic silhouettes, and it's material that is very sturdy so it ages well over time. Next, I will also search for vintage brands. And this is like my sneakiest tip because I feel like not many people think of this, but there are certain brands that are not necessarily that cute today, or there are some brands that like literally don't exist anymore, but they made really cute clothing back in like the eighties or something. So when I thrift an article of clothing that I really like, for example, these were like my favorite green pleated pants. These are from Liz Claiborne, Liz Sport which is a brand that I never would have been like, oh, let me shop Liz Claiborne today. But it turns out if I search on ThreadUp for Liz Claiborne, I can find a bunch of other really cool vintage pieces that have a kind of similar, like tailored silhouette to them. Other vintage brands I like searching for are Classiques, Antier. I got this turtleneck from them a while back on ThreadUp and Ann Taylor Loft has a lot of good older clothing. So for example, I got these pleated pants for $12 when they were originally estimated to cost around 60. Like the Reformation how I am, I will also always do a little search for Reformation and see if ThreadUp has anything in my size. I know Reformation is a little bit bougier than the rest of the clothing that we're talking about here, but I do like buying it off of ThreadUp because they like triple check the quality of all of their items. A lot of the Reformation clothing there is actually new with tags. So for example, I got this gorgeous green Reformation dress. It literally still has the tag on it. Somebody bought it for $218 and I got it for 120 on ThreadUp. So I saved $100 just by buying it secondhand. So those are the main brands that I search for. But another tip is if you don't find anything in your size that you like, you can go one size up and then search for tops um, and kind of like oversized sweaters or maybe even dresses that you could alter into something that you like. Another tip is basically when you're shopping on ThreadUp, when you add something to your basket, they will hold it for you for 24 hours to make sure somebody else doesn't buy it. So I will scroll through a bunch of different pages and add anything that catches my eye to my cart. And then like a couple hours later after I'm done searching, 
I'll go through my cart and it has like a thousand dollars worth of stuff and I will just remove anything that I don't like and through a process of elimination I will come to like what are my favorite pieces that I actually want to buy um, and my final tip is that if you want to get a discount you can use my code best rest for 30% off your first order okay thanks again for throwing up on to the rest of my thrifting tips my next type of store is the thrift store outlet now this is where they take clothing as the next step after it doesn't get sold at a main thrift store they'll take it to like this big warehouse where you can buy clothing by the pound it's super cheap it's like a dollar to three dollars per pound of clothing now you do have to like hunt none of the clothing is hung up so you have to dig through these big bins to find stuff but i have been surprised at the stuff i've been able to find i shit you not one time i found a christian dior cami in the bins my one tip is to bring gloves i went there and i made a rookie mistake and I realized nearly everybody else there had gloves to dig through the bins because the clothing can be like quite dirty or stained or just like abrasive on your hands. Um, so it's nice to wear protection. <laughs> Next up, we have vintage stores, which you guys probably know what they are. They're basically like a more curated version of thrift stores. The prices run around $20 to like $200, depending on how curated a selection it is. Basically what you're paying for here is the fact that you don't have to take the time to go through a thrift store and somebody has already selected really cute items for you. I don't shop at vintage stores too much because I do enjoy like the fun of thrifting, but vintage denim is like my one nemesis that I cannot find for the life of me at a regular thrift store. So vintage stores are my go-to for finding those good like vintage Levi's, Lee Wrangler jeans. <laughs> now I'm just thinking about that dumb joke about them. <laughs> what type of jeans does Mario wear? Denim, denim, denim. Super Mario Bros kids understand. Another option is flea markets. And I honestly think this is such a fun way to spend like a day by yourself or with a date or with a friend. Since most flea markets don't have fitting rooms for you, I'd recommend wearing either like a bodycon dress or leggings and a tighter tank top. So if you find something you like, you can try it on there like at the stall without flashing anybody. Make sure you bring cash because that is what most sellers prefer. And you can also have the option of haggling with sellers. Most prices are negotiable at flea markets like I don't personally do this because I have been like a vintage reseller before and I respect all of the work that goes into selecting items and standing at your stall and trying to sell it but if you are on a budget or you don't think their price is fair um, you can try to negotiate with them a little bit estate sales are one of my favorite ways to thrift that a lot of people don't really know about basically it is like a garage sale but for like wealthy old people generally you can find these by just googling estate sale in your city and there are like whole listing websites that are exclusively made for listing estate sales where they will have photos and a description so make sure before you go to the estate sale that there is either like a photo of a closet or in the description it says that they have a uh, woman's clothing or jewelry because a lot of estate sales are more furniture or antique oriented so you want to make sure that you're going to one that has a clothing selection Estate sales pretty much always occur over the weekend, so you should go on Friday or Saturday if you want to get the best selection of items. But if you go on Sunday later in the afternoon, you will be able to haggle the prices down further because at the very end of the sale, they just like want to get rid of all of that stuff. It depends on your ethics there, whether you want to haggle prices with like an old person moving out of their home. Um, generally, I would just go earlier and pay the full price, but um, it's all about supply and demand, baby. Estate sales do take a lot of work because you have to drive around your entire town to to like all of these random suburbs, but it can be a really fun way to change it up from your regular thrift stores. And it's a great way to hunt for vintage clothing and sometimes designer clothing that has been cared for very well over its lifetime. And I also secretly love looking at like the real estate. <laughs> I just like, like going into people's homes and like looking at their decor and their architecture too. That's probably really creepy. Um, but I don't know, it's fun to kind of like vicariously live this like bougie life. Um, I went to one in Beverly Hills and they had like the most ridiculous bedroom I've ever seen. I don't know, it was just like super cool to experience. Again, this could be a tip for robbing somebody's house, but please don't do that. <laughs> hey guys. Still too many peace signs. It is day two of filming this video because despite what it looks like, I am actually incredibly inarticulate in real life. So it takes me like four hours to gather together a cohesive narrative for a video. Anyways, now that we covered all the different places you can thrift, I wanted to talk about my actual strategy for like hunting through the racks and finding that like one cute item in the abyss of 
really random like promotional trucker t-shirts from like 2005. So the most common advice you'll hear is to put on a podcast and some music and literally just take the time to flip through every single item. I feel like thrifting is almost always a game of like who just doesn't give up because um, it is a lot of work to find actually good stuff but the only way you can find it is by actually putting in the work to flip through the racks. Don't forget to look at every section as well. Everyone knows to look at the men's section now of course but don't forget about the decor, the jewelry, the accessories, you know what's underrated though is the pajama section. Um, a lot of people avoid it because it's like hidden between like nurses scrubs and bras that you might not want to buy secondhand. But in between all those items is where you find all of the cute like silky Victoria's Secret camis and dresses. Yes, sometimes it does weird me out that like maybe people had sex in those but uh just put it in the washer and, and you'll be fine. <laughs> now, I do think this kind of brute force method of looking through every single item is a great strategy when you're starting out and you're not really sure what styles you're looking for yet. You really just wanna explore and look at as many options as possible. However, in order to save time, now that I am more familiar with the types of clothing that I like at thrift stores, I actually don't look at every single item. Instead, I skim the edges and narrow things down based on the color and material. So I only like actually will take the time to pick up a piece of clothing that um, fits those criteria, if that makes sense. So basically to start out, I look at the colors at the edges of the rack and you can already eliminate some clothing there. I avoid clothing that's in really bright, kind of like cheesy 2000s colors, like cobalt blue, orange, bright green. And instead I look for more muted tones or pastel colors. Here is like a palette of all of the colors that I look for. Of course, a classic white or black, a bold red, dark green, mustard yellow, pastels, vintage floral colors, polka dots, and occasionally I will look for bright pink because I feel like it's very like mean girl chic. Of course, everybody has different color preferences. Some people like those bright colors, but I would just go in in advance with like a mental note of what colors you're looking for. At the same time, when I'm looking at the edge of the rack, I'll consider the material. Now, some materials just age really well in a thrift store. They're classic, they're high quality, they're supple, even though that's like a gross word. <laughs> and some materials just feel very cheap or they don't age well over time. The materials that I always look for are silk, cashmere. Um, if you are looking at a cashmere sweater, check the entire sweater to make sure it doesn't have holes in it because I found that they get these tiny little pin holes really easily if you don't store cashmere properly. I think they're like moth holes. I also look for velvet, corduroy, lace, stiff vintage denim that's 100% cotton, and even more common materials like jersey, which is that stretchy material that you find on sweatshirts or t-shirts or cotton, age quite well. Materials that I avoid are polyester, but especially that like one type of Forever 21 polyester. If you guys thrift a lot or shopped at Forever 21, like back in the day, you know what I'm talking about. Acrylic knits are also something I avoid. This is like the material that more affordable Forever 21 H&M sweaters are made out of. And over time it becomes like scratchier and scratchier. And it also pills very easily. And I avoid suede that's kind of sweaty or stained that needs to be washed. I learned the hard way that washing suede is insanely expensive because you can't just pay for a regular dry cleaner. You have to pay for a leather specialist. For example, I thrifted this jacket and I wanted to get it cleaned and they told me it would be $150, which is about five times more than I paid for the jacket itself. So at this point, I've just been wearing it like kind of sweaty and dirty because um, it's not worth paying that much in my opinion to get it cleaned. So yeah, just factor that cost of cleaning in if you are gonna buy suede that's not in good condition. Over time, you become better at identifying the materials based on just the little sliver that like hangs off the edge of the rack. So at this point, I can just skim through the edges of a rack and know like by eye what's silk and what's cashmere. And then I can take a closer look at those items. And that saves me so much time because I can already eliminate all these colors and materials that I don't like. I'll also always make sure to check near the fitting rooms or near mirrors, which is where people will put back clothes that they already tried on. So it's kind of like somebody pre-selected it for you because they thought it was at least good enough to try on. Also throughout thrift stores, there are these random disorganized racks. And these are new racks of clothing that they haven't sorted into the rest of the thrift store yet. So it's a place where you can get first dibs on something that nobody else has looked at yet. A tip for getting through the denim section faster is to memorize the back pocket embroidery of your favorite denim brands. So for me, I always look for Levi's, which is this little V shape on the butt, Wranglers and Lee, because those are the ones that are reputed to have the best like high-waisted straight leg vintage styles. But like if you're looking for a more modern silhouette, you want some like American Eagle jeans, memorize the American Eagle logo so that when you go in and flip through the racks, you can really quickly identify where the jeans are from. Um, also, most of them will have, you know, the brand name on a label on the back. So that's 
that's also pretty easy, but it does save you a little bit of time if you know the back pocket logos by heart. And my final tip is to be willing to DIY or alter or style clothes in a creative way to make them more flattering. I always like to go to the fitting room and kind of play around with like tying up my clothes, tucking it into jeans, seeing what it would look like with a shorter hem so I can envision how I would alter it. Here are a list of easy to alter items that I look for. Men's quarter zips, sweaters, or hoodies that I can easily just cut off with a pair of scissors and make them into a crop top. Just make sure you look for a knit fabric that won't unravel when you cut it. Midi or pencil skirts that I can hem into a mini skirt. Plaid 80s blazers that I can remove the shoulder pads from for a more modern silhouette. High-waisted jeans that I can cut the legs off of to turn them into cut-off shorts or even a plain t-shirt that I could add a little embroidery to to make it more personalized. I do have a whole thrift flip series if you guys wanna get some more ideas for how you could alter clothing that you find in thrift stores. Okay, I think that brings me to the end of this video. Thank the Lord, because I've been building it for so fucking long. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope that these tips uh, were not super obvious and they were somewhat helpful, but I think really at the end of the day, thrifting, it's all about practice, baby. It's all about developing that eye for the styles that you like and the styles that will be most flattering on you. So um, all I can say is, is go out there and give it a try. I hope this encourages you guys to go thrifting if you haven't already. Um, and I will see you guys next week. Um, right now my apartment is like completely full of boxes and random scattered furniture because I'm moving to New York in like four days. So I'm kind of in the middle of a cross country move right now. And I'm really just trying to, trying to still pull off this video in the meantime. Thanks for watching as always. And I'll see you guys next week. Bye.